Nissan cars have gotten too expensive. We paid $9,000 for our Nissan 350Zs, but now you can't find one that cheap that isn't clapped out with a salvage title. But here's the thing, there are still fun cars out there that most people don't think are cool yet. Today we're gonna take a look at a few of these boring cars and show you why they're more fun than you think. I'm Nolan, he's Justin, welcome to Donut. All right, we're gonna start our list with this car right here. This is a Honda Fit. It's owned by one of our directors, Felipe. Now, you might think this is a boring little commuter car, and that's because it technically is, but they're also really fun to drive. So fun, in fact, that Felipe sold his 370Z for this thing. Why the heck did he do that? Let's talk about it. Say you're considering a fun track car with a manual and you plan on banging it up a little bit, okay? An old EG or EK Civic would be a great choice, but they've skyrocketed in price in the last few years, especially for clean ones. Why not consider a Honda Fit? It's light, it's zippy, it comes with a five or six speed manual transmission, and sure, it makes less power than a Civic. But Honda pumped out a bajillion of these things, so you'll have an easier time finding a good one out there on Greg Bliss Farkin Place. <laughs> So the question everyone wants to know is why the heck did you sell your 370 for this? <laughs> oh my God, everyone asks me this on the daily when they find out. Because I had two sports cars and you know, we live in LA and I wanted something that was just small, cheap on gas. On the Z, I would go through at least, you know, $120, $160 worth of gas throughout the week. Uh, but that's because it was on sticky tires. It was not a car meant to be really daily. Do I regret it? No. Uh, <laughs> and I got this because I just wanted a practical daily, although okay. this is not that practical anymore after coilover. Ooh, yeah, you, whoa, you can get into that Vita, bro. <laughs> <laughs> And while they're fun to huck around the track stock, the Fit also has a very strong aftermarket support out there to make performance even better. You can rob Civic parts for these too, oh. if I remember correctly. Yeah, they K-swap them, they're cheap yeah. to own, they're reliable. Yeah. In college, I either wanted a NB Miata mm. or a Fit. Great autocross car, mm -hmm. both of them, obviously. Oh yeah, everybody who has one of these things like always sings their praises, great cars. Big thank you to Nissan for sponsoring this video. The all new Nissan Aria is a huge leap into the future for Nissan. A lot of EVs out there focus on just performance or luxury, but the Nissan Aria is dedicated to giving you both. On the performance side, there's a brand new premium electric drivetrain. I'm driving the Platinum Plus model with E-Force all wheel drive. This is the most powerful Aria. It's got a 91 kilowatt hour battery. That means 389 horsepower and 442 foot pounds of torque doing zero to 60 in less than five seconds. That's the quickest SUV that Nissan's ever built. Well, who's a Nissan Aria for? Well, I'd say it's for anyone who wants an EV that's got power without sacrificing comfort. There's no center stack, which means lots of leg room up front. There's two 12.3 inch screens, a 10.8 inch heads up display, that's cool. There's minimal buttons, the center console, you can move it back and forth, I've never seen that before. Nissan is also equipping the Aria with Pro Pilot Assist 2.0 as an optional feature. It's a ramp to ramp freeway driving assistance system with a ton of features like lane keep assist, lane centering, and will even drive the car for you and suggest when to overtake slower traffic. It's really awesome. And when you arrive at your destination, Aria's optional feature Pro Pilot Park does the work for you. And all those awesome features are wrapped in this modern exterior. Nissan ditched the chrome. They got this satin right here. I think it looks great. Uh, it's also got the 20 inch wheels, optional. Um, now, if you don't mind it, I'm gonna go drive some more. All right. To learn more about the Nissan Aria, click the link below or go to a Nissan dealership near you. This car doesn't really come up on any list other than best cars to drive to Cracker Barrel, probably. I'm talking about the Volvo S80. It looks like it's just a big, inconspicuous luxury sedan, but it's got one of the most interesting and obscure engines out there. Under the hood of this Swedish hog is a 4.4 liter Yamaha V8 making 311 horsepower. If that doesn't already have you all mixed up and don't know what to do, it's traversely mounted and comes in optional all wheel drive. It looks like a pretty run of the mill sedan, but if you slap on an exhaust on this bad boy, you'll be snapping next like Steven Seagal in the 1988 classic Above the Law. 
That's what we're about. Snapping necks and getting fat. <laughs> Half of that's true. <laughs> if you want that big V8 sedan, we found a couple on Craigslist for around five grand. I feel like someone who's also looking for like a Crown Vic yeah. would also like something like this. Well, I like the outside of this thing. It looks pretty good, pretty understated. And yeah, if you had like some cutouts or something on there, it'd be right? pretty sweet. X-pipe? Yeah. yeah. Done. So oh, this next one on the list is one of my personal favorites. If you're looking for something a little burlier, you can't go wrong with a 4x4 Toyota. It'll take you anywhere. A lot of people go for the 4Runner, the Tacoma. All of these vehicles are pretty expensive because they hold their value. However, there's one Toyota that constantly gets slept on because it's a big family SUV that spends most of his life in a parking lot at a mall. It's the Sequoia. While the 4Runner is based off of the Tacoma platform, the Sequoia is based off the full-size Tundra. So that means it comes with a V8 in it. It still has the reliability of a Toyota and you get the third row seating and a V8. Unlike the road Focus Toyota Highlander, the Sequoia is a truck through and through. It comes with optional full-time four-wheel drive. The fully boxed frame makes it super rigid and paired with a center locking diff. This thing is super fun and capable off-road despite being kind of boring. It's not the most desirable Toyota, which makes finding some cheaper low mile versions a lot easier. Even if you do find a higher mile Sequoia out there, it's a freaking Toyota. These cars will be reliable well beyond 200,000 miles. I mean, I've seen pictures of these done up for off-roading and stuff, you know. There are some Sequoias that have been in Baja. It kind of feels like we're blowing up someone's spot here with this one because I mean, this is like the hidden gem of the off-roading Toyotas right here. Exactly. Yeah, I think I'd have this in my garage for sure. Speaking of garages, we're having a sale in ours. It's the Donut Media Garage Sale going on from March 27th to the 31st. Uh, we got $20 logo tees, special edition stickers, special posters, select designs are on sale. Sign up for our mailing list. You'll get uh, email updates and uh, yeah, go to donutmedia.com to find merch all the time. Mm -hmm. If you want to spend a bit more money on a new off-roader and maybe buy something a little bit more American, even though it's made in Mexico and the Sequoia has been built in the US since 2000, then let me introduce you to the younger, slightly less athletic cousin of the Bronco, the Bronco Sport. The Bronco Sport is constantly overlooked because Ford also makes a car with the exact same name that happens to be a little buffer and cooler looking. But if you can look past the name, the Bronco Sport is actually an insanely good vehicle. It's surprisingly quick and comes with all wheel drive and a little thing called goat mode. Goat mode. That's go over all terrain mode. It's got like sand and mud and snow and all this other stuff. The product line is all about getting yourself off road, which exactly. I think is pretty cool. All right, so we're in the Bronco Sport, the Badlands edition, the top trim, and it's raining here in California. We're gonna try to take this thing off road a little bit. It's very wet, but we got the car in mud mode and we're gonna see how that navigates this very muddy hill. And... <laughs> That was, uh... That's concerning. That is concerning. I don't know if I like this. All right, so we got stuck in the mud. This is so funny. <laughs> yeah, you're good. You're back Okay, now, now you can good. straighten your wheels out. Yeah, straighten your front wheel. Straighten your wheel. Very, very carefully. Okay. You're good, now straighten out. Okay, now you're on pavement. Woo! Dude. Sheesh. <laughs> Uh, let's talk about how it drives on the road. I've got the car in sport mode right now. The EcoBoost engine actually does sound pretty good. Like a lot of other crossovers on the market, this thing is like super practical around town and it feels like you're driving a big off-roader, but it's also super easy to park. Pretty cool in that regard. I'm glad we're not in that anymore. <laughs> that was dicey, dude. Oh man. I was like, oh, we just beached this thing 10 feet off the pavement. <laughs> There's like four inches of mud stuck to the tires. <laughs> Yeah, it's too bad that it was so rainy and muddy today because I really wanted to off-road this thing. But to be honest, I think any of the trucks we own probably would have had trouble getting up that. I don't think I'll hold it against the Bronco Sport. So on to the next car. This next car might be one of the most boring cars on this list. 
but that doesn't mean it's not fun to drive. That's the point of this video. I'm talking about the Toyota V6 Camry. If you look in the dictionary under the term boring car, there's a picture of a Camry. But if you find a Camry with a three liter V6 in it, you'll end up with a sporty little sleepy sleeper. Depending on what gen you get, the V6 version makes anywhere from 268 to 301 naturally aspirated horsepower. According to Car and Driver, this 301 horsepower Camry goes zero to 60 in 5.8 seconds. That's faster than a Lamborghini Yalpa. Plus, there's a ton of performance stuff you can find for the Camry, surprisingly. I've actually rented a V6 Camry, mm. and I was like blown away by how quick it was. I think for like a daily driver, like this is Dope. can't really beat it. This next car is one that I can speak on from experience. A few years ago, we made a little series called Kia Car Wars, where we took YouTubers and made them battle behind the wheel of different Kias. My favorite car of that whole project was the Kia Soul GT. Yeah, the gerbil car. I wanted to be like them. The Soul GT has a turbo 1.6 liter four cylinder that puts down 201 horsepower through a seven speed dual clutch transmission. And yeah, it's a little goofy looking, but I had a really great time driving it, Justin, and I thought it looked pretty good too. So you could say that I was Kia sold. <laughs> You know, these lunchbox cars are always slept on and they always end up being fan favorites. Really practical. Again, like something you could put a bunch of stuff in, but still have something that's like kind of quirky and agile, you know, around town is a good car. They're the greatest thing to buy for a high schooler. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's actually very true. Kia Soul GT, check them out. I wish I could look like one of them hamster men. All right, we only have a few more cars on this list, and this next one can be seen literally anywhere, from parkways to driveways to drive throughs and throughways. Everyone knows someone who owns one. The Mazda CX-5 is just an all-around great compact SUV that's good at a lot of things, but doesn't really excel at any one thing, except for being really good at being a car. The thing about the CX-5 is that you can tell the people who made it love driving. It's the same people who made the Miata, and it shows. It's not just some floaty crossover built on a sedan platform, Justin. The steering is responsive, it handles well, mm -hmm. and it's just a tightened up driving experience. My mom and my sister drive a CX-5. <laughs> it's, it's seriously, it's one of my favorite cars. They're so good, and again, like the Kia Soul GT, they're not gonna be a track car. As far as like a daily driver goes, again, very snappy, has a lot of pep to it. Like, they're just great cars. They feel good to drive. And they look good they, too. Yeah, even the and older ones. they're just built good. Great car, Mazda CX-5. There's a bigger one too. The CX-9 is a three row SUV, and the CX-90 is like the lifted one, I think. Mm. But they have a CX-50, which is a lifted CX-5 that has like off-road tires and stuff like that. God. Like, it looks actually pretty sick. Mazda just, they just on point. Dude. Yeah, they're on doing point. it. They're Just bring the Mazda speed back, please. The next car on our list might be the worst on the surface. It's boring, hauls around a bunch of stinky kids, looks like an egg. Just blah. He's right behind me, isn't he? It's the egg. Yep, it sounds boring on paper, but we like them. And for some reason, you all seem to like our Previa a lot too. That's because it's such an oddball. It's a mid-engine, sometimes all-wheel drive, supercharged van. Ours is none of these things, but, <laughs> but it, can it can be. It can be, can be it Justin. It can be. It's a common thing. Oh yeah, yeah, curb hopping already. So much fun. <laughs> It's just not what you think when you think minivan or like car design, you know? Yeah. It's just so odd. It's also really cool. I kind of love this thing already. I've never, I've never driven the Previa. You've never driven this? I'm, no. glad, I'm glad you're driving, man. Yeah. It's so much fun. And ours is lifted, but... So dumb. The Toyota Alltrack all-wheel drive system is capable off-road, so you can slap some big tires on this thing and do pretty well on the trails. You'll probably want to lift it because the engine is mid-mounted and that's a pretty vulnerable position when you're sliding over some rocks. Yeah, it won't want to get high centered on your engine. Right on the oil pan. Apparently, if you want to change your spark plugs, you literally have to drop the hole into it. So maybe not a good project car for some newcomers, but we love ours. Let us know in the comments what you'd like to see us do with the Previa. I'd like to see it be a pre-runner, um, <laughs> you know. I want to paint it like the Lunar Rover, oh, like yeah? with orange fenders and like NASA style graphics on it. The Inglewood Propulsion Lab mobile observatory or something like that. Yeah, it'd be sick.
The last car on this list might be boring, but it's one of the most reliable cars out there. And I can speak for everyone at Donut when I say that if you need a daily driver, you should always go for as much Accord as you can afford. But there's one Accord that's really fun to drive, and it's got a little spinny boy in it. I'm talking about turboed Accords. Turbo K20 engines are common swaps in other cars, but do you know what's easier than swapping a K20 in? Buying one with it already in there. That's right, Justin. This sounds good to you. Look for a 10th gen Accord with the two liter K20 engine. It's basically the Civic Type R engine with a smaller turbo and less robust internals, but it still makes 252 horsepower. And if you're lucky enough to find an Accord Sport with the K20, there's an optional six speed manual transmission, which is very fun. Good dad car, I think, you know? Compared to a Civic Type R, you'll be paying a fraction of the price for a car that's honestly really good. And if you really wanted to, you could build the hell out of that K20 to make a ton of power. If you just had a baby and you need a dad mobile, don't get a charger. Wait, yeah, dude, that, that Accord 10th gen looks awesome. Automatic may be boring, but technology has made them really cool. Those 10 speeds in the Mustangs and Camaros and oh, yeah. Honda Accords make them scary fast. Yeah. No cars are boring, Nolan. I think that's what we've learned today. You know, I had an acting teacher who said there's no boring cars, only boring drivers. Thank you so much for watching this list. Make sure you subscribe to Donut Media so you never miss another video. Subscribe to Justin's Instagram page. And TikTok, same and TikTok. name, Justin Freeman. Follow me at Nolan J. Sykes. Go to DonutMedia.com. Don't miss out on that garage sale. It's ending this Friday, and we'll see you next time. Y'all have a good one.